All right, welcome back, everybody. It's been about two years since uh, me and my brother, Chris Roy, uh, did a show. I've been on him for two years to keep doing this show, and he finally agreed. And with the capabilities of Zoom, we can get to it and try to keep it a little more regular. Well, you know, I have a little bit of extra free time on my hands these days, so uh, it's about as good as time as any. Yeah, you know, it's nice being unemployed for like, well, it'll be six weeks by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but hey, when life hands you lemons, make some lemonade, right? Yeah. Put a little tequila in there. Hey, I'm gonna give it a shot. As soon as uh, as soon as the Rock sends me a bottle of Terramana. Yeah, man. Did they, did, did they say when that's supposed to get to Michigan? No, he didn't tell me. It's supposed to be here by now, but COVID nineteen screwed that up too. So. The liquor stores are still open, so that's essential, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, Can't order it on Amazon? Especially since we're all strapped inside. Like, I mean, I had two margaritas last night. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Well, uh, I'll keep my eye open. Hey, I'll try it. I've never had tequila, so. Oh, that's not true. Your, the night of your rehearsal dinner, that coffee shit, was that, was that tequila? Yeah. Whiskey. No, that was tequila. That was awful. It was disgusting. To this day, I'll never drink it again. I mean, it was just, it tasted like coffee. <laughs> it was gross. Yeah. So I, I just mentioned we beat the hell out of each other drinking it. Yeah. Yeah, that but, was fun. Yeah. Yeah. At least something good came out of that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. how, sure as hell wasn't my marriage. <laughs> All, All right. right. All right, so, so we're uh, so we don't have a forty-five minute episode. All right, today it's kind of we're just gonna try to be goofy, maybe give, give you some value out of this, guys. Uh, so we're gonna ask each other questions. We we have not told each other what we're gonna ask each other, so we're just kind of winging this thing and uh, gonna get some authentic responses here. So we each got two questions for each other, and we've got a backup question just in case one of our questions is is similar. And then I also posted Instagram last night to get any questions that I'm going to pick the best one um, that we'll both answer. So um, age before beauty, my man. Oh, all right. Funny guy. I mean, I guess. Okay. No, go ahead. Yeah. Well, that's shit on your face. Uh, I think hey, I look weird. Don't be knocking. Hey, I'm not going to be seeing anybody for like a month, man. I'm going to see what I can get going here. <laughs> All right. I can, I can totally surpass that awkward stage out in public. I can just stay at home and get and see if I can actually grow a legit beard. So if there's ever a time to do it. Now's the time. Uh, can't argue that. All right. So first question, a little bit more of the serious. The advice you'd give 14-year-old C-Roy. Oh, that's a good question. Um, 14 years old. Yeah, that was like right before I was getting ready to get started. Um, doesn't I would say, what? I was just going to say, it doesn't have to be health and fitness related. It could be anything, you know, like, I mean, you got crabs. Oh, time so I'm I'm like, that. <laughs> uh, my mind automatically just went to went to lifting. Um, yeah, I figured. I guess I, I guess I'll do a piece of advice for life and for lifting. Um, for lifting, I would say uh, lift heavy. Don't don't be a pansy. Like keep stuff very basic, like your big compound movements, and just. Focus on getting more weight on the bar every time you walk into the gym. I wasted a long time um, with high volume. Like when you're a 16 year old kid, you have no business doing an incline cable fly. Like, dude, like you can't even bench over 185. Like, don't worry about incline cable flies or pec decks and stuff. Like, you know stick to your big economical lifts, the things that you give you most bang for your buck. Um, so stick to the big stuff and just worry about putting more weight on the bar every time you come in. That would be my biggest piece of lifting advice for 14 year old me. Um, life advice. Uh, 
don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Um, don't be afraid to fail. What other people think, um, if there's something you want to do, just go for it. And, uh, don't, don't worry about how other people will perceive you if you fail or anything like that. Um, I was very, very shy and very conscious about how other people viewed me to the point where it, I let it paralyze me in a lot of things that I did. And I wouldn't even try a lot of things because of that. So I think that, and I still battle with that today in some regards. Um, I'm a lot better because I'm conscious of it now, but um, that, that would probably be the big one because that was right when I was starting high school. And that's really when it affected me the most was through high school. So um, that's probably what I would go with. All right. Legit. I, I feel very mature. <laughs> that was, uh, I kind of surprised myself a little bit with that, but yeah, that, that, that's what I would go with. All right. All right. So, uh, your, your turn late on. Me. All right. Um, what's the big, see, <laughs> no, okay. This is fine. Um, what's the biggest training mistake? Actually, before I go into this, this is a two part question. It's like an AB. Okay, so right. you answer the part A, then I'll give you part B. What's the biggest training mistake you made when you first started out? Biggest training mistake. Yeah. So when you start, when you first started lifting and training, what was the biggest mistake you made? Uh, I did not focus on progression. I was just kind of random. Like so, like I didn't track what I was benching, what I was squatting. You know, for all I know. I might have squatted 225 one week and then went to 205 the following week. Same reps, not really paying attention to what I was doing. Like, keep in mind, this was before YouTube. This is before Google. Like, I mean, it's crazy yeah. to say, but that's how far we've come in such a short time. Um, I really didn't have any guidance till later on after joining the gym. So, I mean, that was probably my biggest mistake was just there was no progression or no – no rhyme or reason to, to my training at all. So, All right. Part B. So part A, what was your biggest training mistake when you first started out? Part B, what's the biggest training mistake you've made in the last year? In the last year? Yeah. Probably not sticking with a strength program long enough. I did that one strength program you put me on and made like a lot of strides in it. And then like, I didn't stay on top of it once the program was over. Yeah. You get bored with stuff super fast. Yeah. Yeah. I have a ADD when it comes to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can, I mean, I get it sometimes too. I mean, when you're there, all, but um, you can just kind of get caught up in the stuff a lot, but all right, cool, cool. All right, I'm ready for my second question. Let's go. All right, this one's more fun. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve in the gym? Oh. Hmm. My biggest pet peeve in the gym. See, this is tough because I haven't worked in, like, a public gym in so long. Um Good. Huh? Go back to, I mean, it doesn't have to yeah. be like something that happened yesterday. Well, I should say three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Gym's like, in this world. I've basically, I mean, I've been running my own gym now for three years, three, four years. So, I mean, I've really, I've had a pretty good grasp on the culture within my gym. So I don't really see a lot of stuff that annoys me too much. Um, uh, I guess I would say, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty basic answer, but it does bother the hell out of me is when people don't rack their stuff. Um, I remember the last summer, the summer before the, the powerhouse by my house, I, I got a membership there just so I could work out there on Sunday mornings, um, just for a change of scenery. And I did that for probably like five or six months. And um, there was one dude there that like would go to the flat bench like work his way up to like 205 225 and then he'd go to the incline bench and leave the other one there and just leave the 225 on there and then he'd work his way up on the incline bench and then he'd leave there to go do cables and both barbells were sitting there with weight on him. like that that just 
that's probably my biggest one just because it's so simple. Like, I mean, you, sh you shouldn't even have to like have like gym etiquette to understand that you should put that stuff away. Yeah. yeah. Like, nobody should tell you that that you have to do that. It should just be common sense. So that's probably, probably my biggest one, or at least the one that comes to my mind right now. If I, I'll probably think of something like two hours that, that would bother me more, but I mean, what, why, what, what's yours? You're there every day. Well, well, I got the, the, the common one, the guy that wants to do bicep curls and squat rack, you know, which is fine if like, there's not a lot of people there, but like you can legitimately do a curl anywhere in the gym. You can go to the parking lot and do a curl. You don't need to do it where there's a spot where only one person can squat or deadlift. Okay. Yeah. That person doesn't have the option to go anywhere and do that. And then the other one is the, the guy that feels the need to scream when he's doing bicep curls. Like, I don't even care if you're curling the hundred pound dumbbells, like you're doing a single joint bicep curl. Like you don't need to be screaming and showboating. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a long time. So yeah, that's it's all I have squat racks at my gym. So, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So this is a cool question. You ready for your quest, second question? Yeah. This is kind of a provoking question. If you could have dinner with three people alive or dead, who would they be and why? Who? Man. Yeah. Live or dead. That's a tough one. That is a really tough one. Man. That puts me on the spot, too. Uh, I mean, The Rock has got to be on there. Got yeah, yeah, that's a given. I mean, the Rock is I, the question should have been if you could have dinner with The Rock and two other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know for a fact that he's gonna be on there. Yeah, The Rock for sure. Just be I mean, just look what he's done. I mean, he he literally he's legitimately taken over the world. So his mind for business and just just branding himself is like there's things that we probably have no idea that he does, but he just does it sub like it's now subconscious to him that he just does it. Dude, that's it. Like, I don't even, like, obviously the rock would be on my list too, but like, I don't even know if I would ask him questions about how I could build my brand, but like, like legit, I mean, that's like my childhood hero right there. And I would probably like, it'd be more just like, just like life stuff, man. Like that dude, he's deep, man. He's a deep guy. So hey, dude, dude, why are you so cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, I don't know, man, but yeah, no, he'd definitely be on mine too. So you got two more. Who else you got? So the rock for sure. Um, probably. Man. You know what? I probably, now that I'm on the spot and I'm just thinking of it off the top of my head, but Jocko Willick, I'd probably do Jocko. I think Jocko, when it comes to leading people, like Jocko is on another planet with that stuff. Not to mention he's a former Navy SEAL. And I just feel like that'd be sweet to hear some of those stories. Like, I feel like that'd be incredible to hear. Yeah. Um, which, I mean... I listen to his podcast, so I do hear some of them, but I feel like you could really get some in-depth stuff if you're there one-on-one -on -one with him. Yeah, I'm not a big Jocko guy. I mean, I don't got anything against him. I just don't really know anything about him. I mean, I've heard his name a bunch, but I don't know anything about him, so. Yeah, he's he's pretty intense. Um, and he's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, jiu -jitsu guy, so I don't know, I'd ask him a lot about that stuff, too. And my third person... trying to diversify because I mean there's a lot of people I'm really like I follow like I follow Rob Bailey but again that kind of ties in with the rock of building a brand that kind of thing um take your time yeah, you know take this whole show what? Actually, what? Probably, honestly, honestly, just because it's most recent and I've really gotten into him, Pat McAfee. Oh my God. I was going to say his name is a joke. <laughs> just, no, dude, honestly, like do your, if whoever's you watching mean, this, if you want some serious entertainment, just go watch Pat McAfee. Like the, the guy is, he's funny. He's, I mean, the stuff that he comes up with off the top of his head is, 
it's almost like you would think it's scripted, but it's not. Well, it's um, nothing he would offer comedic relief stuff. So. Yeah, like I mean, he'd just be fun. I mean, I feel like he'd just be a good time. Same with like Joe Rogan. I, uh, Joe Rogan would probably be a tie in there. Yeah, he crossed my mind just because that dude knows something about everything. Yeah, like, smart guy, and he's he's pretty philosophical. So yeah, he's dude. yeah mine, right. there's mine my there's my three. Rock Rock would definitely be on mine. Um, Grandpa would be on mine, um, just because I never got to meet him, and uh, what he built and what he created. It'd be cool to kind of a just meet him and talk to him, but uh, see see what he had to say about everything. And um, I don't know what that third one would be. It'd probably be I. <sighs> There's a lot of historical figures that I'd like to get on there, like, but then also it's like, if you think about putting Plit on there. Yeah, I thought about Plit. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's a really hard question. I, I'll, I'll just, it was your question. I'll just go with, I mean, the Rock and Grandpa would be my my yeah. for sure. I mean, Plit, Plit could be on, but we've actually talked to Plit like numerous times. So yeah. we kind of got a feel for that, but yeah. Uh, but a little shout out for people that don't know, we named the show Roy Boy Standard because my grandpa started a, a service station. It was called Roy Brothers Standards that our dad owned with his brother. So this is this show is kind of like a little shout out to a little our, nod to our family, basically. Yeah. So a little background information. That's where the name came from. My, grand, um, my grandfather built a fortune off of 50 bucks. I mean... That's a story maybe for another episode or anything, but that dude was uh he was a go getter. So Yeah. So all right. And our last question comes from one of your IG followers. So um oh yeah, okay. Um it from from my dude AJ. Um what made you want to start lifting? Uh, I'll start with this one. So anybody that's followed me for any amount of time, like it's pretty simple. My lifting came from, I was a fat kid. So I didn't want to be fat anymore because I wanted a girlfriend. Like, like Chris can attest to this. The women in my class, like blows any class out of the water. How many attractive females were in my class? Shout out to Holly high school class of 03. Yeah. No doubt. Like so. it, was, it was kind of, it was weird. It was like, it was like you stole all the hot chicks for like <laughs> a worth of, of classes. Because <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was insane. And it being was, a fat kid, I was friends with damn near all of them. But I'm like, I'm the fat kid. Like none of these girls are going to date me. Not to mention like when we were freshmen, all the seniors were dating our girls, which really pissed me off. Like, you know, date your own women like seriously <laughs> but anyway that's what started it and then like it was influenced by the wwe wrestling i'm a big wrestling fan um triple h at that time was just like a monster of a man yeah, and john cena at that time too like so i wanted to look like those guys so that's what got me into lifting so um as for me uh i mean i when i was 15 I uh, got a sports physical for basketball and they told me I, ha I had high blood pressure. I wasn't overweight, but I, I definitely wasn't healthy. I mean, I drank a lot of pop, ate a lot of fast food, a lot of pizza, stuff like that. Um, and they said it was probably just like white coat syndrome where you're just nervous for getting your blood pressure tested. But nonetheless, it scared the shit out of me. Um, and right from then, I just started, you know, I went cold turkey that night, um, trying to get healthier, eating better. And I actually did, I just started running. I ran for probably like six months. Um, and then it wasn't until, I mean, right, this is 15 years old. So I was right around puberty. So I kind of started hitting my growth spurt and, you know, getting taller, thinning out while running. I just, I started getting really lean and I started getting like some abs coming in. And, uh, once I started seeing abs and I saw this like transformation taking place, I kind of started getting really kind of addicted to the process and, and wanted to start, you know, looking more into, to exert and to lifting and everything. My brother had already been lifting for a couple of years at that point. So had kind of like a, a nice soft introduction to it. So I started kind of researching some things and, um, I found, 
that's when I found Plitt, Greg Plitt, the guy that we just mentioned. Um, he was a fitness model um, and like the top fitness model ever. Uh, and I found him, found some of his workout videos. And then that kind of led into getting a membership on his website, which I believe is still up and running. Um, so, he passed. Yeah, he and passed. I have four. Greg Plitt is top fitness model, but also former Army Ranger. So the dude was a badass. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, his membership, he, he passed away about four or five years ago in, a, in an unfortunate accident. But, um, you know, he, he was huge into, you know, shaping kind of like my mindset and the way I approach lifting and everything. And, uh, you know, for anybody out there, like, go, go look on his site. I mean, yeah, it'd be money well spent. Yeah, everything that shaped my mindset today and, and my grit and, and how I approach lifting was shaped by the content on his website. And even though he's passed, it's still all on there. And it's it's gold. It's gold. Yeah. So, by um, far out of all the, because now it's in, influencers, the thing, um, Greg Plitt was like the original influencer. Yeah. Like he started all this stuff well before like yeah. these YouTube channels exploded. Yeah. Yeah, like there he was, was always the man around when he was doing it. Like Facebook was like yeah. just meet your high school buddies and stuff. Like he was the first one before. Like and if he was still around today, if he didn't pass away, he'd be. Oh, huge. he'd be huge. Every year we'd go visit him. His line got longer and longer and longer. The only only reason I we I went, <laughs> like I didn't. I drove over three hours just to talk to him for five minutes. Like, um, he was awesome. So. Uh, that's really what got me started and uh, it was just the physical transformation just getting hooked on that and uh, that's yep. really what you know, got. that's what everybody doesn't understand as soon as you start seeing the changes the addiction sets in and then like it's a lot easier to start saying no to bad foods and it's a lot easier to start like going to the gym even when you're tired because you start seeing those changes and that's what you get addicted to instead of like chocolate or McDonald's whatever the hell it is but people don't stick with it long enough um but again, we'll get into that in future episodes. Wanted to keep this one light, um, kind of fun. Have you been timing this? How long have we been going for? Oh, probably longer than we want. Um, damn, there's not a no. There's no timer. I don't think we've been going that long. Is your third? Is your backup question super intuitive? No, it's really mine's not. E mine's not either. Stupid. It's stupid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Fuck it. If it's if it's too long, we can split it up. Um, so, uh, what, what are your thoughts on uh, fat Tuesday? <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, I've chilled out a little bit on this, but I, I talked about that. The backstory to this is, uh, he went off big time. I think it was on a, was it a post? Yeah, yeah it was a post. I think it was uh, a Facebook post. I did it like two years in a row. Yeah. So this is back when I was like 19, 20, 21, like, very young and just very raw and rash and you know not thinking about how i would be perceived or or, or seen but yeah just a very long it, and that was like right when i was get i was i was the deepest into it i'd ever been just f bomb city oh, yeah it was it was bad um but not very much unlike how i still feel today i'm just better at uh keeping it under wraps um but yeah, I'm not a big fan of Fat Tuesday. I, I don't, I know it's like cultural for, for, you know, I think it's Polish people and I'm Polish. We're Polish and I still hate it. Like, um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken on it, but yeah, it's just, it's not, it's we, not. One of we, my live, we live in a country where 40% of people are obese. It's fucking Fat Tuesday every single day. Yeah, like, let's be real. That's a, essentially a paraphrased version of kind of what I said in those posts. Yeah, but. All right, what's yours? My backup question. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Um, all right, so you got to choose one. Ready? This is a quick question. You just got to choose one. All right. You can have all the powers of Superman, but you have the body of Jack Black and there's nothing you can do about it. Or you can have the body of The Rock, but you have the strength and capability of – yeah, you have the strength and capability of the average non-lifter. <laughs> I mean, that sucks. Yeah, I know, right? So but, I, mean, I, I got to take superpowers. <laughs> and look like I'll, Jack. I'll take the superpowers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just so much you can do, right? Yeah. 
I mean, I was fat once. So I could go back to it, I guess. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no uh, offense to Jack Black. I love Jack Black. He yeah. stole your money. <laughs> well, yeah, that's all I got. So, all right. Well, let's uh, we'll sign this bad boy off. Um, I mean, just give a couple shout outs just to keep uh, everybody, you know, at the forefront. You got C Roy Strength Performance, which is Chris's gym. You see his logo back there once that right. bad boy opens back up. And then, uh, me, I'm at Retro Fitness in Rochester downtown. Once we open back up, um, you know. Get everybody back in the gym, and uh, we'll definitely keep this show going. Oh, if we get, if this show gets, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it out there. It's got to be big. So, like, 100 likes by next, what is this month? Shit, what day is it? What is today? Monday. By next Monday, days don't exist. 100 likes on what? On this video. When this, when I, when I publish this. We get a hundred likes on YouTube, which is where this will be. You got to shave that beard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is some commitment here, man. I've been letting this thing go. Try to shave half of it. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll look really good. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, much more to come, guys. Like I said, we've got nothing but time. We got a month ahead of us. Um, they just extended the social distancing through April period, so. Um, We'll try to pump these out somewhat often just to give you guys a, a daily dose of distraction from all the craziness going on in the world. So give you some value, give you some entertainment and uh, have some fun along the way. So yeah, this, this will be in YouTube. We'll publish the podcast if you want to listen to it and not see the video um, in the comments. Um, but, you know, like us, share us and, uh, you know, and comment. Let us know what you think. Give us questions, anything. All right. So. I'm Will Roy, Chris Roy. Uh, yeah, put on your uh, sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> NWA in the house. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.